Hi, this is Drew Erickson back again talking about money, not math, because I believe most people love money without realizing how often it doesn't work the same way as math. And I love our country, but I believe our government is terrible at managing money and should not control our financial future. So my goal is to bring you value to, so you can hopefully enhance your future financial planning. All right. So um, today I'm reading an article from fool.com, which is short for The Motley Fool. Uh, keep in mind, I've had people comment in the past, I'm including the link on my post just to cite my source of what I'm reading. I'm not encouraging you to go on their site and click on their different ads, right? Just like any other site, The Motley Fool's got a ton of ads. So please don't get mad at me if you click on one of their ads and it brings you some down, down some rabbit hole. My goal is just to focus on the, in, the information that I believe is important from the article itself, not all the ads surrounding it, all right? So today, the article I'm reading is titled and reviewing is four retirement planning tips in the time of coronavirus. All right, and it's written by uh, Maury Backman, I believe. And I believe she makes some really good points that I'm going to read her writing, but also expand on the points made. All right, so the market is plunging and the world is facing a massive health crisis. crisis. The good news, all is not lost on the retirement front. Planning for retirement can be a daunting prospect under normal circumstances, but with COVID-19 wrecking havoc on the stock market and causing IRA and 401k balance to crumble, it can be hard to keep a clear head. Keep in mind when she says IRA and 401k, she really is referencing all stock market driven accounts, right? It's just not, it's not just IRA and 401ks that are driven by the stock market. Um, here are a few tips that will help you keep your cool and stay on course as we navigate these uncertain times, all right? So the four things that, the four uh, recommendations she makes uh, are one, be flexible, two, keep extra money in cash, three, focus on the future, and four, don't dump your stocks, all right? So number one, the recent stock market downturn may unfortunately alter your retirement plans if you're hoping to retire this year or even next year. You may need to rethink that and give the market extra time to recover. It's too soon to tell when that recovery might happen or what it will look like, so the key is to be as flexible as possible. Rather than fixating on the things you're giving up, retiring when you want to, focus on the opportunities you might have by delaying that milestone. For example, the longer you wait to take your social security, the higher that social security payment becomes as long as it's not past age 70 and a half. So with that, the, the, important, the, the point she makes that's extremely important is understanding market fluctuations happen. All right, on average, I think it's every eight years, excuse me, on average every eight, year, every eight years or so, we have a market correction of some sort. It's to be expected. So when we're investing in the market, it's one of those things that we need to understand. And I understand we haven't had a correction since 2008, so it feels like the world is ending, but the reality of it is, is this is how the market works. So with that, being flexible means understanding it's very likely the market will come back. We just don't know when. All right, it might be a few months from now, it might be a few years from now, but the important thing is being flexible. And on that note, I think it's also extremely important going forward, asking yourself, how are you planning your financial plan in a flexible way so you aren't completely dependent on the market? All right, I've had a lot of conversations with people in the last couple of weeks who are on two ends of the spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, you have most people who will have all of their life savings pretty much dependent dependent on the stock market. For these people, these are extremely stressful times because all of their accounts are going down, down, down as the market does. All right. On the other side of the spectrum, we have I, we have people that that I talk to and I work with that some of their their assets are dependent on the market, but they also have other retirement planning assets that aren't dependent on the stock market. For these people, it's not that stressful because they know they've been planning for this all the time and they understand there are all their options out there that in fact, now is actually a decent time to invest in the market while the stocks are at a lower price. So what you have to ask yourself moving forward is, when the next market correction happens, do you want, all, do you want to be flexible and have multiple retirement planning accounts that aren't all completely dependent on the stock market or do you want to have all your money completely dependent on the stock market, which isn't actually that flexible in the first place? Even if you invest in 1,000 different stocks in some sort of mutual fund, you're still in the market. Okay, so number two, keep extra money in cash. This is extremely important, extremely important. If the recent market crumble has taught us anything, it's the importance of having cash reserves at all times. First of all, if you're nearing retirement, you should have a chunk of your savings in cash. 
enough to potentially cover a, bill, a year of bills or more so you can ride out market downturns throughout your senior years. Or another, or if you don't want to have a, a year's worth just in the you know savings, at least have other money not invested in the stock market, right? Like I just talked about. Additionally, it's important to have emergency savings for unplanned expenses or scenarios, whether it's home repairs or the effects of global health crisis or being sent home from work because of the coronavirus. In addition to keeping some of your retirement savings in cash, have a good six months worth of essential living expenses in the bank. Incidentally, that's something worth doing at any age, not just as means of retirement planning. I 100% agree with this person on this in this point. I believe no matter how old you are, where you are in your life stages of uh, whether you're just getting married, just having kids, entering retirement, already in retirement, having three at minimum, but six ideally months of living expenses saved up safely in cash or in money that's guaranteed not to go down when the market does is extremely important. All right, there's so many different life events that we have no idea what's, what's gonna happen that it's important to have money available. On that note, I have had people ask me, have reached out to me asking, is now a good time to invest in the stock market? And it is, it, it, I mean, it could be if you're flexible and you're okay with the risks, but because the market's down, which means stocks are cheaper, so it's not a bad time to get in if you have that flexibility. But that's the big if there. You don't want to wholesale take all the cash you have and dump it in the market hoping it's going to go back up. That's how a lot of people lost a bunch of money in cryptocurrency. My response to, the, to these people are if you have your emergency funds built up and if you're comfortable with the risk that the market may continue going down for a while, then, that, then yes, it's not a bad time to get in the market. But if you don't have your emergency fund built up and you're not comfortable with potentially losing the money you put in, maybe now is not a good time to invest. Just like, it's kind of like if you go to the casino and you're desperate to walk out with the money you walk in with, you probably shouldn't walk in in the first place. You should, if you walk in, be comfortable with losing everything you walk, that you walked in with because that's how the casino makes money, right? So on the other side of that, in, in being flexible and having cash or liquidity on hand, imagine on that note, imagine how if the market keeps correcting like it did in 08, how valuable it could be to have liquid wealth available to take advantage of the market correcting itself, if the housing market gets cheaper, you know, there's many different opportunities to invest when the market's down, but if all your money is tied up in the market, you don't have the liquidity available to take advantage of those opportunities. All right, number three, focus on the future. The stock market may appear to be in pretty bad shape right now, but remember, this isn't the first hiccup it's faced, nor is COVID-19 the first health crisis that's impacted it. The market has a strong history of recovering from downturns and letting investors who stay the course come out ahead. So don't drive yourself crazy checking your IRA or 401k balance every other day, because keep in mind, unless you sell your stocks, you aren't actually losing money. It's just the balance doesn't look as good as it used to. Until you liquidate the investment, it isn't the, the gain or the loss has not been locked in. Instead, focus on and continuing, and for many people who aren't even close to retirement, your IRA and 401k money is locked up anyways. So instead of focusing on continuing to excel at your job, sorry, instead, focus on continuing to excel at your job so you're able to keep it, keep at it as long as you want and spend your, and spend your time thinking about the things you'll do once retirement does arrive. And also continue funding your IRA or 401k the way you were the good news is that now now's a good time to invest on the cheap. So if you stick with your regularly scheduled retirement plan contributions, there's a good chance they'll really pay off. That's where dollar cost averaging comes into play. Meaning if you invest $100 a month, if your stock cost is $10, you get 10 stocks. If the stock if your stock goes up to $20, you only get 5 stocks $100 a month. If your stock cost goes down to $5, you get 20 stocks this month. So that's where dollar cost averaging when it comes to investing in the market comes into play. Number four, don't dump your stocks. Tempting, tempting as it may be to unload your stock investments at, this at, at a time like this, don't. You only lock in losses when you sell investments while they're down. So while it may be nerve wracking to see those lower numbers in your portfolio, don't panic or make rash decisions. There's a lot of uncertainty, uncertainty in the world today and when you're trying to map out your retirement, it can make up for a very stressful situation. The best thing you can do, therefore, is to stay calm, adjust your plans as necessary, and remember that this period, too, shall pass. With any luck, you'll be in a strong position to retire once it does. All right, so those are the four retirement planning tips in at the time of coronavirus. One, be flexible, not only with 
where your money is invested, but how you can use it and how it's infected, infected, affected by the market fluctuations. Two, keep extra money in cash or liquid for not only emergencies and emergency funds, but also for opportunities moving forward. Number three, focus on the future. Number four, don't dump your stocks due to emotion. Remember, at the end of the day, logic always wins when it comes to your money. All right, so today, hopefully today's Money Not Math conversation brought you value. Please let me know what you think by reaching out, commenting, or liking my posts. And even better yet, if you really enjoyed it, please share with a friend. Thanks again for your time, and I hope you have a good day. Good luck with dealing with the coronavirus and all the other stuff, all the other changes that seem to be happening in our country right now. Thanks. Bye.